Hello, welcome to the eighth week, the last week of our course Marketing Management 2. Uh, and then this week we will be discussing uh, some interesting areas of marketing that uh, we have not specifically covered in our earlier discussions. So, earlier discussions we have mostly emphasized um, marketing based on what we call the goods based logic or dealing with products. This week we are going to start uh, with uh, marketing of services. There are some very interesting distinctive features of services and as a result the marketing of services uh, need some additional uh, knowledge or additional considerations uh, for marketers. For these lectures, I am going to give you three references. One reference is the Kotler and Keller book published by Pearson India, the 15th edition uh, that is available in India, the latest edition that I have already uh, referred earlier and uh, I have mentioned to you. I am going to use chapter number 14 of this book on services management that means not only marketing of services but also operations and as we will shortly discuss in marketing operations and um, marketing of services uh, can hardly be distinguished. That is why we have a model called Servaction which basically says that marketing and production are quite integrated or in a good service organization they will be seamless. And uh, therefore, services management as an integrated concept has been covered in another NPTEL course that I had delivered that is available as a full certification course. So, those of you who are interested you can refer uh, to those lectures for more detailed understanding because in this course which is focusing on various aspects of marketing, we are only, only going to take uh, 6 sessions on services marketing whereas in that uh, other full fledged course on services management, uh, we have a coverage of 20 hours plus and therefore, uh, more, much more detailed analysis uh, will be available in that course. I will also refer um, for a good reference a book that I have co-authored with uh, Professor Lovelock and Professor Wirtz, uh, Jochen Wirtz. So, this book uh, Services Marketing is uh, quite popular as a textbook in India and you it is available in the low cost edition from uh, Pearson India and you can uh, the seventh edition uh, is available right now and you can uh, refer to that as well. Now, we will first uh, start uh, with uh, the definition of uh, service, what is service. So, I think uh, sort of intuitively you already know that a service is an act or a performance and where one party can offer another party some value uh, which is anyway this exchange of value is a fundamental basis of all marketing activities and that applies to services also. The only thing is here uh, often that value takes an intangible form or primarily intangible. There may be some goods associated or tangible elements associated. As we progress in uh, through the sessions of this week, you will see the various strategies associated with this uh, 
tangibilizing the intangible, but fundamentally service is intangible. The other very important uh, point about service and that perhaps is a more important uh, point uh, 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 opposed to intangibility because nowadays intangibility, tangibility they are quite overlapping and often is a sort of continuum. But the point about no transfer of ownership is a, a very important point. No transfer of ownership is involved in services. So, if you go and uh, uh, see a movie or you attend a musical program or uh, you are part of an educational institution as a student, uh, you are uh, uh, you have gone to a doctor's chamber uh, for uh, dental treatment. In all these cases, you there is no transfer of ownership of the equipment used for your dental treatment or um, in your institution for your education or uh, uh, no transfer of ownership when you take a flight from uh, Mumbai to Delhi. So, you are using the aircraft, you are using the airport, you are using services of uh, many dimensions um, uh, embedded in these uh, airport air, uh, aircraft and so on, but there is no transfer of ownership. You are only using uh, all the facilities for a time for a fee. Same thing for uh, watching a movie the movie hall, the seat, the projection system, the sound system and all that uh, or even the movie itself as a content, there is no transfer of ownership. If you buy a DVD of the movie, there is a transfer of uh, a limited ownership. But in the movie hall, you watch, you enjoy, you come out and so you had the possession of the all the equipment that gave you that enjoyment for a time for a fee. So, this rental or uh, use time based use of facilities, equipment, tangible products without transfer of ownership is a crucial important point in case of service. It is because of this and another important point which is called um, co-creation because in most cases in a, 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 on service occasions, the service provider and the service consumer, they are together uh, creating an experience. So, if you go for a haircut, you will be chatting with the um, your uh, the technician, uh, your barber, you will be explaining what kind of haircut you want. So, the salon personnel will be uh, working with you with your uh, preferences and executing the final style that you want. So, here is an example of co-creation. In the same way, there are many services even if you are listening to a music concert. So, there is the, the, the musician uh, there are maybe you know a whole lot of musicians, it is a band playing, but the enjoyment and the experience, you are also a participant and therefore, a creator of that experience. Without you, there would not have been any experience. Without listeners, there is no music, uh, which is uh, a, a concert. So, a concert is a co-creation event of a service between the musician and the audience. So, this customer's presence as a co-creator is another important element of uh, service. And between these two, this non-transfer of ownership and this co-creation, many um, experts are now saying that this gives us an alternative logic to understand marketing and that is the service dominant logic. Those of you who are interested to explore this, you can search information on SD logic or service dominant logic. Lot of 
papers and presentations are available. It draws lot of attention because if you take the service approach, then what happens is you create an alternative paradigm for economic activity. Normally in the goods dominated logic, we operate on the basis of take, make and finally waste. So, what happens is that you take resources from nature, you make products, those product the trans, there is an ownership transfer of those products in the goods dominated marketing and those products after certain use ultimately land up as waste in garbage heaps and that model of economics produces worldwide tons and tons and tons of garbage. So, the whole world is becoming uh, in, in a way submerged in this big plague of uh, uh, garbage creation that is the view of these alternative thinkers. And therefore, uh, they propose a more service dominated approach to all economic activities which says you borrow use and return something like you know you borrow a book from the library you read it you uh, make summary of it and uh, you can uh, absorb it and then when your study is completed you return it. So, this borrow use and return as an alternative to take make and waste is a whole economic activity logic which is based on this concept of service. So, service may or may not be tied to a physical product and we will see uh, those issues just now. Uh, service sectors are all it covers uh, just by the logic that we use just now. Uh, therefore, uh, service activities will be in the government sector in the private uh, not for profit, uh, for profit, manufacturing, retail everywhere uh, there is uh, service activity. So, if for example, retail is uh, often considered primarily as a service activity because uh, the success in uh, retail marketing that we have discussed in a previous week. If you see it in the light of what we are going to discuss during this week, you will understand that the success in retail marketing depends on uh, your ability to handle uh, the service concepts well. So, there are, uh, there are different types of uh, services which I was describing just now. Uh, to understand this, we can uh, put this goods and services on a continuum. So, at one end are pure tangible goods, something that you know hardly any service is necessary. Say, for example, salt or um, uh, or or uh, even water. Uh, you know, in the in the earlier days, might have been only uh, is is just pure goods. But today of course, uh, good water needs not only uh, the input uh, product of water, but it needs also a lot of service for uh, cleaning, for mineralization and for other stuff. So, water also is not uh, a pure tangible good anymore. In fact, uh, except uh, few uh, food items, basic food items or spices etcetera. Uh, like whether it is a chili or uh, salt, uh, there are very few examples of pure tangible goods. Most of the uh, goods are uh, goods and services are integrated and at the other end, so this whole the integration depends on the degree of uh, on the left hand side you can say there are more goods and some services. On the right hand side, we have more services and uh, um, some associated uh, goods. So, on the extreme right hand end, we have examples of pure services like this session that you are experiencing, this exchange of knowledge that we are having is uh, an example of almost pure service. 
I mean there are some goods associated like you are seeing it perhaps on your uh, computer screen or on your mobile phone screen. At the background there are um, uh, these all kinds of um, you know network equipment, other computers, servers, storage equipment etcetera, but that is invisible to you. Uh, in fact, you may be uh, experiencing this on a computer in your uh, college or institution and then therefore, you do not own that. So, everything is something that is available to you for this sessions use. If you go to a music concert or movie hall as I was talking about or you go to the hospital for treatment, these are all examples of uh, mostly pure service. The focus is on service and not on the goods, but of course, uh, for marketing purpose this pure intangible side of service we may need to tangibilize for creating some differential or differentiated marketing strategies we will discuss that shortly. But at this point let me say that goods to services is a continuum based on tangibility to intangibility. Then there are uh, various uh, services um, uh, distinctions like it can be equipment based. So, if you send your car for a repair or if you give your TV for repair, these are uh, services which are primarily uh, based on equipment or there can be pure uh, people based. So, when your children go to the kindergarten school, uh, mostly those are uh, services which are based on uh, people based services. So, it could be you know the teacher is a skilled person, but it could be you know sometimes uh, the people process peop even your haircut is a skilled uh, people to people uh, service person to person service. But then there can be uh, services uh, where um, the, the service process will be different somewhere uh, the your presence will be necessary. So, like in case of the haircut or in case of the medical treatment, your dental treatment in all these cases uh, uh, the, the service provider and the service consumer they are present uh, within the same time and uh, geography frame. But if you give your uh, car uh, to the workshop for your for repair and you take it uh, after repair after 2 days, then uh, it, it, you are not present during that whole process. So, uh, so, there is, so there are some services uh, particularly the person to person services which are inseparable uh, and uh, between the service provider and the service consumer. So, uh, the, so the client's presence may be needed uh, may not be needed. Uh, Sometimes services are for personal needs like you are going to a restaurant um, uh, could be for your personal need you are going out with your family, but the same service can also be for business needs if you are going out for lunch on a business lunch or uh, you are uh, throwing a party for your um, company colleagues. So, those can be for business needs and uh, uh, also there are business specific services you know like the photocopying service which is provided to uh, all offices in an office building. So, that is a business service. So, so services are therefore, personal business, but as I mentioned uh, giving the example of the restaurant sometimes the same service can be for personal or for uh, business. And uh, most important is that the objectives can be profit uh, not for profit like it can be a charitable service, it can be a social service uh, at the time of disaster provided by Ramakrishna mission. Uh, so, that is those services can have different objectives and as I discussed uh, services can have uh, no transfer of ownership, but the service organizations can have different forms of ownership we will discuss that uh, more in detail. So, if you uh, uh, refer to Kotler's book you will see figure 14.1 which is uh, gives uh, this continuum 
uh, from uh, one end to the other end which is shown here. And here we look at services from a, a little bit um, different perspective. So, here what happens is on the left hand side we have what we call high in search qualities. So, these are services where customers will be looking for a lot of information. If you uh, remember the last week's uh, discussion when we were discussing about promotion, advertising, etcetera. So, this uh, attention, interest, desire, action. So, customers are actually looking for a lot of information, lot of knowledge formation takes place to uh, evaluate and make choices. So, most of the goods and uh, uh, based on uh, the value of uh, per unit goods actually from left to right. So, you can see here uh, something like a house or an automobile uh, will be uh, very high in search qualities. Even restaurant uh, choices particularly for specific occasions you are going to propose uh, to somebody um, or you are going to have an important uh, business negotiation. So, there even a restaurant meal uh, may actually uh, have high uh, search, but what you will really be looking for is experience there, a superior experience. So, this is the middle where services which are high in experience qualities. So, restaurant meals, vacation, haircut, child care, these are high in experience quality. And then comes this last block, a very complex block. Uh, which is called high in credence quality. So, here uh, in high in search quality customers may form expectations and customers may uh, uh, form opinion about quality uh, because these are goods even without experiencing those goods. So, even by looking at a house or by looking at a furniture you may be able to make an assessment uh, e evaluation of the quality and value of that particular um, uh, product. Here it is much more tangible, these are mostly products. In these services which are experienced by the as by this very definition it means that you need to experience to evaluate. Without experiencing uh, by going by somebody else's opinion you will not be able to evaluate because your evaluation may differ from somebody else's. So, a restaurant which may be very famous uh, or highly recommended to you by your friends, you might not like it because the subjectivity comes more and more as we move from left to right. Okay? So, these are experiential. So, here the formation of our opinion about service quality our satisfaction all depends on experience and the, it, the formation of the opinion happens post experience. And the last is like a root canal treatment for your uh, tooth or a, a medical operation or a uh, car repair. Um, in all these cases actually you will not know the uh, value of the service, how good the service was till you have actually used it post service for some time. So, you may not know that whether you are cured immediately after the operation. It will take some time for you to evaluate how good was the medical treatment. The same thing applies to education. It will take some time for you to understand that how good was that particular session that you attended or that particular course that you had taken. So, these, these services are therefore called credence uh, loaded services or cre high credence services. These are services where assessment, evaluation and assessment by the customer can only happen after a length of time after the service occasion has occurred. And as you can see therefore, the marketing here will be mostly goods 
dominated marketing, the kind of stuff that we have already discussed. As we come to experiential marketing, we have to get into some new areas, some more behavioral and psychological areas, because this is where subjective each occasion is different, each person is different. So, the human beings involved both as service provider and service consumer on each occasion creates an infinite variety here and therefore, marketing here has lot of interesting dimensions that we might not have specifically discussed so far. And on the right hand side, this is a, 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 a quite a different ball game, this credence based services. So, the credence based services, we will soon understand that marketing of credence based, in fact, something like say uh, auditing function or many other types of services are legally you cannot advertise. So, the marketing therefore, depends on creating uh, referrals, creating impressions, uh, uh, calibrating the expectation in the customer's mind and we will discuss all these different aspects of these exciting new areas of marketing in our next session. Thank you.